uh, with the permission of our honorable vice chancellor sir uh, we are going to start today's event sir if you kindly permit then we can go ahead i can't start can't start this please. okay uh, good morning and warm welcome to you all in today's webinar on importance of entrepreneurship and social impact today we are immensely pleased to have with us our honorable vice chancellor sir Professor Dr. Shaikot Maitro, our guest speakers, Mr. Sanjay Chatterjee, the founder of Ideas and Technology Solution, Ideal Analytics Solution, and NTOB Technologies, Moshio Frederick Torza, founder and CEO of Joyu, a 20 year old company in France and US. We have our other co panelists, Dr. Das Gupta, Dr. Navarun Bhattacharya, and Dr. Devashish Bey. As you all know, sir, uh, today, uh, the August 21st is celebrated as World Entrepreneurs Day. And we want to salute them for sailing into turbulent ocean of uncertainty with their small robot of innovative ideas and indomitable courage of achievement. Entrepreneurs have ignored the comfort of employment and creates employment for many, putting their money as well as their reputation at stake. It is because of them we are enjoying new products and services, new processes, new resources, which are changing our way of life and bring more convenience and comfort across all segments of the society. Their innovation is helping to preserve natural resources, environment protection, clean water, human health, education, and many more. We will hear today more in detail from our learner speakers. Before we hand over the session to our speaker, I would request our Honorable Vice Chancellor sir, to say a few words. So, uh, Mr. Mukhopadhar, uh, today, uh, keeping uh, uh, in mind that uh, today is the World in, uh, Entrepreneurship Day, our innovation cell, incubation centers, and the university, uh, other departments of the university, in a collaborative manner organize this program. It's a matter of uh, great uh, pride for all of us that uh, from this university, we are uh, pursuing uh, this uh, entrepreneurship uh, activity uh, for our students, who are particularly student communities, uh, relentlessly uh, taking offer, taking you know this uh, grabbing the opportunity in different forms. So today, uh, experts in, uh, in, in the field of entrepreneurship, Mr. Sh Sanjay Chatterjee, Mr. Frederick uh, uh, Torza, uh, Torza, and uh, they they will be sharing their very valuable uh, views and opinions, uh, guiding our uh, future entrepreneurs. That is our student community. So. This is this. Uh, we want to make it a culture at our university. This entrepreneurial culture. This may be uh, either uh, you know, this taking up uh, a project uh, for 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 setting startup or doing things in, in a in a better manner. Uh, of, uh, in, in maybe in, in job place also. This entrepreneurial culture is very much required to improve the existing things to bring more quality, more efficiency in the work. And at the same time, uh, if uh, someone uh, becomes successful in startup ventures and all these things, that is that is a great you know, this uh, thing for all of us because we want to uh, produce a numbers of uh, employers or job givers and uh, this uh, the student community who are here for uh, taking uh, futuristic skill and knowledge uh, in uh, from different programs and uh, information technology computer science, uh, other professional program, book science, biotechnology, and other areas. So uh, from them, uh, these, uh, there is a massive expectation of the society and the country. So uh, taking all the opportunities, all this, uh, all, the, uh, all the resources which are available at this country, uh, a substantial number of them, we believe, should come forward, uh, will come forward in future for uh, setting up these sorts of activity. And uh, there, uh, the purpose of our existence will also be justified or also be more prominent in that case. And uh, now, in today's context, uh, 
opportunities uh, are enormous in different formats. These opportunities are coming. As many things are uh, going to be start uh, going to be started from the scratch uh, from, uh, from an entirely new perspective. So there are abundant opportunities to explore the new arena uh, and uh, to, to uh, explore uh, you know, this new dimension and directions. And there, therefore, uh, this is the right time for, for for doing these sorts of activities. Yesterday, we had the opportunity to, uh, to uh, interact with some of the experts at one of, one of the uh, uh, program organized by National. There also, this opinion was the you know this in this uncertain world, many opportunities are coming. So uh, we, sh uh, we should uh, make ourselves prepared uh, to, uh, to 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 grab these opportunities as when well it is available in the best possible manner. So uh, I believe that today uh, from the deliberations of these resource persons, all the will benefited. Along with that, Mr. Pradeep Mukhopadhyay, Dr. Navaran Bhattacharya, who had a significant years of experiences in professional fields they are also there for 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 uh, guiding the guiding the students for moderating the session for uh, uh, for uh, uh, facilitating the entire things in the most productive manner so with this my best wishes to all the students all the participants who are present over here and sincere thanks to uh, the resource persons today including our uh, own uh, this, uh, faculty members and uh, and this was person from the university itself. So thank you very much, Mr. Mukhamad. I can't take this program forward. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your kind words of motivations and the valued perspective you have given. Uh, now I would take the pleasure of introducing our guest speakers, uh, Moshi Frederick Torza. He is the founder and CEO of Cho Yu a 20-year-old company in France and US, working in the areas of IT marketing and services, consulting business intelligence and content with its subsidiary IT for Business, the first magazine in France dedicated to digital managers and CIOs. Frederick is also co-founder of Idle Analytics, a business intelligence product company based in Kolkata, India. Frederick is alumnus to University of California. Now, Mr. Sanjay Chatterjee he is an engineer with experiences from Tata Motors and Tata Technologies. Mr. Sanjay started his entrepreneurial journey 15 years ago, founding ideas and technology solutions ideal analytic solutions and NQB technologies and startups in the domain of healthcare genomics and environment tech and developing software products and solution in the areas of analytics and data science, IoT and enterprise mobility. Mr. Sanjay is also the chair of NASCOM East and National Council member of NASCOM SME. Sanjay has received his MTech from Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. Uh, this is the brief introduction about our guest speakers of honor for the day. Now I would request uh, Mr. Sanjay to, you know, take over the session and distribute your, I mean, talk between you and Mr. Petri. Mr. Sanjay. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor Mitro Moitro and other dignitaries. And thank you, Fred, for coming in. Uh, yeah. In fact, I'm doing business with Fred for more than a decade now. So really honored to share the common stage with Fred. Uh, for as, as today's context is entrepreneurship and uh, around social impact from entrepreneurship. So if I may share my screen, uh, will, that be an, will that be okay so that I can take you to some slides that I prepared? So let me know whether you can see my screen. Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, make a full screen. Yes. Okay. So is it fully visible? Yes, it is fully visible. Okay. So when we talk about entrepreneurship and organizations built by entrepreneurs, definitely it will have a social impact. 
I mean, needless to say, like, you know, at the minimum level employment generation, economy increase, and these are very common and we know all. But these days, last uh, around 20 years, there has been a huge change in the way the entrepreneurs think. And recently due to COVID, the alignment towards more purpose-driven entrepreneurship, the way I thought it's calling it better instead of social entrepreneurship or you know, general. So this has, uh, we have found a trend in this area, a huge trend. And in this trend, not only the new startups which are coming into this bandwagon, but the old startups, I mean, old companies and big enterprises, they have also started in the same area. With this, and this is the statement made by the founder of Ashoka, that's one of the you know, well-known enterprises. They help social enterprises globally. So this is really true. If we start with some case studies, I think that will be easier for communicating what I think uh, for this purpose-driven entrepreneurship. So let, let me share with you two case studies. One from a very small company from Europe. In fact, I came to know about this from Fred and he's one of the customers of this company. You see, it started, this company, I think based in Spain, if I'm not wrong. They started just a few years back and they positioned, I mean, an area which is something very critical in for society. If you see around 20% of the food produced in the European, Europe, EU is lost or wasted. This is scary. So $143 billion is lost every year. It has not only the impact of only money, but it has got other impact, of course, the environment, huge environment impact. And out of this total food wastage, 21% is coming from the fruits and vegetable, which is a small portion. But, but even the small portion, they account for 76% and 41% of the food waste generating during the you know, production and the consumption, respectively. But this is also a very interesting fact. Now, when this problem was not unknown to all, a small company based in Spain, they decided how can they do crowd farming? It's like crowdsourcing. They did a, I mean, gen, they basically made the normal farmers as crowd farmers. Now, within just a few years, the statistics is humongous. I will show that, but let me just explain you their business model, the way they, they did it. So imagine, and it operates globally. There is a small farmer who produces maybe an uh, olive tree in a very remote village in Cuba. And then this company connects to that guy and maybe from France, somebody orders that olive tree. Instead of ordering the product, the person is adopting a tree. Now, along with adopting a tree, the, he's also getting the produce out of the tree maybe twice a year. Like Fred gets olive oil from one of the vendor from this company called crowdfunding, crowdfarming.com. Now benefit is this farmer is directly being able to sell that. And as a customer, the huge benefit that the, you get, like, you know, you feel empowered that this is, you are adopting a tree. So you are paying for some good cause. And not only that, when the product comes to you, it comes with your own personal branding and that makes you feel good. Not only the product quality is good, but also your feel good factor is also there. And you know that you are also creating a business, I mean, social impact. And this particular company is not an NGO. It's not a non-profit organization. This is a purely for-profit startup, grew up very fast. The numbers, if you see, it's also pretty interesting in just uh, one or two years. 172 firms selling through already 1,500 firming jobs has been created. A whopping number of 248,000 unique customers that they made only with 134 employees. This is only in one year, 300, almost 300,000 uh, customers. 
and globally, including uh, because these days the supply chain global it has become you know easy, and they are not only selling this. This is not a normal commerce, so that is not like you know you are ordering and losing the customer. So it's basically by adopting a tree or, or, of of your choice, you are basically having a sticking bond with the customer. So now this is the business model from a small company. Now they grew up like this. This was only possible because the business model that they had who had a very good social angle to it. And of course, not from a NGO perspective, not from a non-profit perspective, but with even, with even doing you know, a proper business model, they could do this. The next example is, I think you all know, but still I would love to share this, is an example from a big enterprise. So on the left side, if you see how Tesla makes, it, makes its money, See, with $10 billion of total revenue, gross profit of around $2 billion, if you see their operating profit is around $600 million, which is very almost equal to the regulatory credit that they get. This regulatory credit is nothing but the carbon credit that they get by selling those electric vehicles. Now, this is a very interesting case study. So after so many things, you know, their operating profit is almost equal to their regulatory credit. And this trend is increasing a lot. So that this kind of a business model, this was extremely innovative and future-proof. And imagine uh, in a lot of new old, and in fact, you know, uh, make, I mean, even these uh, uh, companies like those who are doing uh, hyper-local transports using electric vehicles. So they are taking advantage of this kind of a carbon credit and they get a lot of benefit and at times it is more than you know their revenue. There are some companies, this, their total revenue, I mean 80% of the majority of their revenue comes from the carbon saving, then their product selling directly. And this, they, those are case studies also available. Now the numbers you see every year, this is increasing. This is a real case of Tesla, they made it happen. Let us see the complete band of enterprise spectrum. This we all know, but just you know, to recap, maybe we have seen enterprises, which is big enterprises, which are right side, which is the conscious companies or any company, they do a lot of CSR activities. And recently, if you see uh, in the enterprise world, ESG has become very popular as a and, 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 and kind of a lot of big companies, almost, I mean, any company which has got more than 1,000 crore business, they are going for an ESG, which is environment, social, and governance. This is how the companies or the corporates or enterprises, they give back to the society. Of course, that's one side of it. Even there are companies who are maybe, you know, uh, their products are not helping that way. Maybe I'll just take an example of a cigarette company, tobacco company. So that's not directly helping other than employment generation and all, maybe. But now they are also coming up with innovative ideas to give back to the society so that they can also contribute to this ESG programs. And then in between the socially responsible business and this kind of an enterprises, there lies you know, some overlapping where they kind of do a give and take. You have seen in this area, companies like Isride and a lot of small uh, transport hailing companies, those are hyper logistics, we call it. So you are doing a carpool, means you are saving some money. And also your car, you are not taking it on the road. So you are saving carbon footprint. So by which effectively the company gets benefited and you also save money. So now this is another interesting zone. Number three is, which is our topic today, which is purpose-driven business or socially responsible business. This is the yellow color, which I think uh, most interesting. And of course, non-profit and NGOs, those are uh, already, they were existing for decades. Now let's uh, quickly go through a couple of entrepreneurial types like you know what kind of entrepreneur you are and what exactly it takes to be a social entrepreneur i would rather not say social entrepreneur rather i say like you know entrepreneur 
with a business model which will create an impact. The first kind we saw, we call it the hustlers. So they are very much enthusiastic and go-getter. You can see their consciousness is above average. Extroversion and agree agreeableness is also above average. Jig Jiggler is like a, a, is a technology entrepreneur. And Mary Kay as she was the founder of Mary Kay Foundation. That was a cosmetic product. So when she died, she has a $2.2 billion of revenue coming from his business. Out of that, I think she donated around 50% of that for social causes. The innovator is another kind where interesting names of Evan Williams comes and Tony Hayes. They have more openness, emotional stability. So they're always forward looking, adventurous of course. This is very known cases for us, Microsoft and Oracle, Larry Edition from the founder of Oracle. So they, they're equipped with, you know, kind of aptitude, they know what to do. And they have a, I mean, the way the Microsoft started and all, so we know how, they know it best how to get things done, very simple. The way the Oracle evolved. So they have a huge consciousness level, which is much more above average. So that made them the machine. I mean, not in a true sense, but yes, I mean, in the category just for our understanding. The prodigy is the next category where is Elon Musk comes, Tesla CEO, and Larry Page from Google. That's also an interesting where their agreeableness is very pretty high. They're much above average. And they have a huge fluid intelligence. So they are blessed with inborn talent, honestly. I mean, that is not something very common. So they have a very strong social skill, skill as well. So that helps them to succeed. Like you have seen the way Elon Musk thinks, the way he made Tesla or he made himself an icon like this is my personal favorite <laughs> Steve Jobs and Martha Stewart also is like a she was a, a retail business woman in fact their main capabilities emotional stability and openness and of course, fluid intelligence, a combination of all. But they are a tactical thinker. And the way you see the Adobe products are launched, sorry, Apple products are launched, like they know it, what customer wants, and even they create the customers. They create customer habits. And now that's where they have, these are the long-term players. They are not the short-term players. So if you see, they're very dynamic also. Like so far, Apple has changed their logos for five times. Different color combinations, I mean, different shapes. And finally, the logo that we see now, it's, it has got five predecessors. The last but not the least is the visionaries. Interestingly, these two Opera Winfrey, there's a, uh, there's a network called OWN, Opera Winfrey Network. And Ted Turner was the famous TDS, uh, which is uh, Turner Broadcasting System, which was acquired by CNN long back. So they were visionaries in their areas. And these two examples that I gave, those are from the media. So they were media tycoon. In fact, Ted Turner was, I think, uh, before, he was a television producer, and then uh, it, it came pretty big. Uh, TDS was the name that he founded. So they combine the new innovative ideas, and they have they take the mass along with them. 
So that's a very interesting. So that's why their extroversion factor is very high. So that's much above average. And of course, openness and food intelligence. Now, when it takes to social entrepreneurship, they are combination of all. Honestly, I have my own way of defining purpose-driven entrepreneurs. So what, it, what are the way I want to express my experience and define this, an entrepreneur who invents a business that works without him or her. So that's something, what you call sustainable. That's maybe the development is evolutionary, but the impact should be revolutionary. So that's the way I think a social entrepreneur would think, or at least, you know, uh, have the business model in this. So how we do it, which is the social model we have in one side and our organizational model, our operational model is another side. In between, we have got strategies. So like I gave the example of ESG, now people are coming up with a lot of standardization and all. So it helps you to adopt some of the standard mechanisms like ESG and they're a lot similar. So now, we once we know the how we do it, of course, we know what well, what we do is our mission statement and why we do it is our vision statement. So now if we can align this towards the impact and how much impact that we will have, the business will have, so that, that will probably help the entrepreneur to make the strategy well. Finally, a couple of statistics for all of you before I give it to Fred. So you see, it's very interesting the way I, I when I said I started, I, I told like you know this trend is increasing a lot, increase in the way people are thinking now or doing business now. So all entrepreneurs now they are aligning towards an impact. Uh, I mean towards a business model which will create an impact and social impact. So money is of course there, but with a strong social impact. So third, three point two percent of the total. Adult populations are starting social purpose businesses worldwide. Very interesting. Highest in Peru, 10.1% and lowest in South Korea. But still, this is a percentage-wise average 3.2% is very interesting. Nearly 3 in 50 US professionals are involved in social startups. These are actual data. Sorry. In UK, more likely to have underprecedented population directors. 31%, this is very interesting. If you see the 31% represent an ethnic minority and 8% represent an ethnic minority for the commercial enterprises, but the social enterprises, if you see 31% represents an ethnic minority, which I think that really the world is changing. This is a huge change, 8% and 13% if you compare commercial versus social. And similarly, in case of gender, because now if you see the, uh, you know, not only the normal enterprises, but even the big banks, like the lending agencies, like World Bank, ADB and all, other than the ESG environment, social, they have a component and must component, which is gender. So gender equality, it's almost every project now, it is mandated to have environment, social and gender. It's very important. So now here, the interesting data that we see here, in the social enterprise, it's almost 50-50, 55% male and 45% female. Unlike in commercial, we have only one third female. So we see a great trend where we are going. And maybe, you know, uh, I mean, this is uh, for the whole world. And this is uh, for the current year, I mean, 2021. So after COVID, this is really, really impacting high. And there has to be a very interesting news, if you see this chart, the, the young guys should be very happy. You see, this is increasing, even from 8 to 24, they have started, you know. So this was 18 to 24. So this is interesting because at this age, people are now thinking of social, doing an enterprise which, allow, which will have a social impact. And even at that age group, which was earlier, not like that, that was a pretty much skewed towards the end. So this is a very perfect graph and this is very encouraging. So with this, I stop here.
and request Fred to take his, maybe uh, we'll take the questions together at the end. Yes, we will take the questions. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. So I will try to know, is everyone uh, can hear me, I guess? Yes, we can hear yes. you, hear me. Okay, uh, so uh, what I'm going to do, it's uh, on my side, I will share my screen as well. Um, so tell me if you can see my screen. Yes, we can see your screen. Yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you very much, Sanjoy. And uh, Sanjoy uh, gave you a very clear uh, microeconomic vision of what could be uh, the importance of entrepreneurship and social impact. And uh, because uh, you are so nice to invite me uh, to participate to this uh, session, I will give you uh, our vision. And our vision is slightly different. It means that uh, we go, we go at, at the end at the same result, but we are not coming from the same things. Uh, maybe it's because we are very, uh, another way to think here in Europe. It's uh, we, we like to start from the basic to understand on the philosophic way to think why uh, it's important to be uh, an entrepreneur with a social impact today. So, as I say, uh, I did a small summary and I would like to talk about what is the purpose of, uh, of a company and uh, just to remind the purpose of the company and uh, why uh, the, this purpose the, uh, is no longer enough and where we need to go. And I will try to develop then after what are the different pillars to build um, uh, entrepreneurship with social impact. So when I start about the purpose, uh, we know that uh, we didn't evaluate a lot. We didn't improve a lot uh, since uh, the beginning of the 18th centuries, because on the 18th centuries, uh, we had Adam Smith, a Scottish guy, who developed in a book, uh, Wealth of Nations, uh, the principle of uh, the liberalism. And the principle of the liberalism is, in brief, that my uh, personal interest and the sum of all the personal interests will, will, will go and will work for the uh, general interest. In fact, if I have to take example, uh, if, I am, um, if I have a restaurant and um, I take care of my clients, is not because I'm caring of my clients as a human, it's because it, it's on my interest to taking care of my clients. And if I am taking care of my clients, then the clients will be uh, nice with me, will come back, and I will try to do my best. And if I try to do my best, in this case, the client will come back again. And in this case, it will be on my own interest. But if everyone is acting this way, it will go, it will go uh, on the common and general interest of the full economy. So uh, we call that the invisible hand of the economy. So we thought till now that the profit of one person and his private interests and the sum of private interests will be go uh, and good for the common interest. But, 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 but in this idea, it was really good in the beginning, but also in the modern company, in modern society, uh, it's, we, we go now into the wall. Why? It's because by looking for his own profit, we are killing some subcontractor, we are killing some market, we are trying to use uh, ourselves as a predator and not at all to, uh, to make a sustainable economy. And also, uh, there is another point. It's uh, because of the demography, because of the weakness of all the states in action, now we see companies like, uh, like more than just a place to make business, it's a place also to taking care of the society. 
I like uh, a quote saying that when you are creating a company, you're creating the society who come with. You know, uh, it's important that each time you are creating a company, you're creating a kind of society, a small society. And also, um, you, you, you know maybe that in Europe, we have some uh, issue to find uh, employees and to try to attract the good employees and also to keep the motivation at the top. And the reason why is because um, people want to have a reason to work. Today, uh, we have, uh, for example, we have, uh, it's easy to, to go and to, to grab uh, uh, fruits, it's easy to grab the electronics, it's easy to grab everything, but on the same time, we would like to understand why we are doing that. And the reason why is because we try to make, to find a sense of what we do, okay? And that is why uh, if you are looking only for profit, it should be not enough. Not enough, not for all companies, because if you are in a small company and you have, for example, your small restaurant, the profit, for example, will be a KPIs for you to understand that your clients are very satisfied. But if I am working in a big organization, if I am working, for example, at Google, I am in the marketing, if I am doing something good or if I am doing something bad, there is not real effect on the share, on the action, on the share of uh, Google. There is not real effect on the, on the real economy for Google. So how can I justify my job? And how can I justify my job? That is why we need to find uh, a way for the people to think together, a way to the people to unify all the members of the same company. And uh, it's something very well explained in, uh, in the book of uh, uh, Yuval uh, Noah Hariri. It's a brief history of humankind. I don't know if you are familiar with this uh, with this book, but I, I would like you to, to pay attention to it because he's explaining that finally we are creating step by step, we are, we are creating a, a, a kind of virtual world and the virtual world can be the company because the company doesn't exist like a river or a mountain or whatever, but it's existing and is acting every day on my day-to-day -day life. So, Every day I receive my payroll for our company, but this company is not something I can touch. It's not something I can see. It's a, a virtual element, okay? And in this company, we can make sure that some people who doesn't know each other can work together. In, so for a common uh, purpose. And for example, if I am working at uh, Hermès, because we are uh, Hermès or uh, LVMH, which is a, a quite a luxury brand in France, I feel like I work in the luxury. So I am, it's a status for me to work there. But if I am working in a, a small company or small enterprise, we try to do uh, rice. I, uh, for example, rice, rice importation, it's exactly not the same things. And, I, and my value, I will feel uh, close to the luxury if I am working with LVMH. And if I'm working for the rice company, I will, I will have another mindset. The thing is that we need to create fiction. We need to create fiction. And sometimes this fiction becomes true. A company is a fiction who become true and who's acting every day on my day-to-day -day life. So, for example, if I am working and one, one uh, essential things, uh, if I have to, to, to pay attention to that, if I have to take an example, it will be, for example, the case of uh, a company like Salesforce. Salesforce say, uh, Salesforce is an IT company. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar and who start to work as a CRM into a, a SaaS model, software as a service model. And uh, final, finally, they, they are trying to do software like many other companies who's doing software. But finally, what they did, 
they say, okay, we are not going to talk too much about software. We are going to talk about what we do with our profit. With our profit, uh, we help people. With our profit, we try to uh, increase, uh, I don't know, health or something like that. We try to do uh, uh, things for good. And in this case, uh, people who are working at Salesforce strongly believe that what they are doing is to help uh, the planet. And they completely forget that finally they sell uh, softwares. And the real business is to sell software, not to help the planet. But Salesforce is strong enough to make you believe that you are saving the planet by working with them. And at the end, they clearly save the planet because at the end, they help the planet. So they create a fiction and this fiction became a reality. And it's important that what we need to unify members and to make sure that uh, we, we, have to, we have to find a cause to embrace this cause and uh, to make sure that people who doesn't know each other can work together. And it's very important to keep up the motivation, to keep the motivation up. So for that, we have, I guess, three pillars out of the profit. One pillar, it's important, is the role and the function of uh, each employees. The thing is, is how to consider the employees uh, inside the company and to consider the employees like a human and not only someone stick to the function. It means, like uh, Sanjoy mentioned just before, it's important that you are talking about male, male and female. Yes, but in this case, it means that you are considering that male and female is different. Employees is not just a laborer. It's someone you have to consider with all this personality. And it's something which works very much today in Western countries and many countries on the, on the companies it's uh, how you recognize the other as an individual. Okay, so in this case, you need to have more respect for employees, a better life balance, because you understand that the person you are in face, in front of you, this person is not just a laborer, but a human, and you are respecting as a human. And it's important because this is the first pillar of uh, entrepreneurship uh, with social um, with social um, impact so and the second pillar in this case will be the ethic value and the ethic value it's a easy example also to take it's if you take for example a company or even a country with very low ethic value where there is a corruption where there is a piracy Fifth, and you see that this kind of country are not very rich country, most of them. Uh, most of them are not very rich. Sometimes you will see that a very small part of the population will be rich, but most of the country will be not rich. So I, we, we understand that if we don't have ethic value, it just not works. It's important to define ethic value and to make sure that uh, we are going to follow this ethic value. And the ethic value needs to be in line with uh, the fiction we just created. So in this case, if I have to take the example of Salesforce, I say that we are going to say, for example, the environment. Why not? In this case, it needs to be reflected in a day-to-day -day value. It, it's important to have some ethic value in the company who are in line and who stick to our uh, initial purpose and initial fiction. I, I am talking about fiction not to say that it doesn't exist because fiction is existing. And that is why some people can work together without knowing us. It's, uh, which is quite important. And on the third pillar, on the third pillar, it's uh, to make sure that the ethic is in action. 
And why is because about integrity, about accountability, ethics, principle, all the value, we need always to stick to uh, our ethic. So it's not possible just to say, we are going to save the planet. We are going to make a, a, a better planet without any action every, uh, every day, you, uh, action you can see. For example, on the case of Salesforce, again, in this case, what you are going to see it's uh, each employee can have two weeks a year to go to a non-profit uh, uh, and paid by the company. They go to a non-profit um, association and paid by the company. They can choose a non-profit association and work on it. So you can see in clear that every day someone will come back to you and say, I was last week uh, um, helping uh, people in... Uh, I don't know exactly in a part of, uh, of uh, Bengal or in a part of whatever to help uh, young people for a better knowledge or uh, a better health or whatever. And I, and, I, and I did one week of my time paid by my company to help uh, uh, a country, to help a company, to help an association or any kind of nonprofit. So it's something you see on the real time. It's something you can, you can even touch. So to summarize, what is important is to say, okay, speaking about our own interests, like uh, uh, Mr. Adams used to say before, and the, the reason of the liberalism is not working anymore. And we can't say that performance can drive the business only. We can't say that because it's not super clear when you are in a big organization that we have to talk about performance because performance is very, very far from the person who is working on the day to day. So we need to create a fiction. And by the way, this fiction is there is so many causes to work on it because there is, as you say, uh, as you know, there is a health, there is a planet, there is a, the climate change. There is so many things you can work on it. So, and it's super important to say that finally we can choose your cause or even multiple causes and uh, also to work on it and to make sure that we can unify all members of the employees or the company on the same ID. And when you choose that, you can work on it and to get in, in terms of efficiency, especially in this world where people want to find sense about what they are doing. And now, as you can see, I have um, quite a cold aspect and a cold view. And what I'm saying, it's uh, I don't believe that we are doing uh, working on social entrepreneurship just because we are nice people is because it's a question of interest because it works better this way and uh, if after that you believe that you are uh, a better person great but uh, what you need to understand it's it works and now what we can say it's is it good or not and i would like to take the example of the Bill Gates and Bill Gates, it was mentioned by Sanjoy just before, and Bill Gates did the incredible company. And also, I like that uh, what he says. He says that uh, he is a leader is only successful if the people they are leading are successful, which is great when he ran Microsoft and now is uh, head of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation an American Humanist Philanthropic Foundation, which is absolutely wonderful and is helping, for example, mostly in Africa to, uh, to remove the malaria, to help uh, the health. And I think it's, a, it's really a great thing. But the question is, uh, what is the control of the population on uh, this kind of ID. And I notice uh, Bill Gates because I really appreciate what he's doing. And I think that it's a, it's a really positive impact about what he did. And he, all his career, it's full of positive impact. But uh, I would like just to say that sometimes things are not 
black or white, but can be gray because today we are talking with Bill and Melinda Gates about a foundation and who is helping clearly people. But um, for example, this company, uh, this foundation is not helping uh, education in the uh, Far East. And me, I would like to help uh, education in Far East. Why and who choose the purpose of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation? Only Bill and Melinda Gates and all the stakeholders. So uh, what I'm saying is uh, with this new uh, kind of economy, population doesn't have any more the control of uh, what they are doing. For example, if I against a, a, a country, we can uh, talk to that, to the, to the United Nations. But if I'm against the help of uh, Bill and, and Melinda Gates, what can I do? Nothing. So the thing is, uh, I think that uh, entrepreneurship for social impact, clearly it's a good thing. But be careful because we don't have at the end uh, a real power about some people who are going to taking care of our life. I am saying, for example, Google in San Francisco, they decide to implement a new office in a not really nice area of San Francisco. In this case, they say, okay, I'm coming to this area and I, will, I would like to clean all this area so I will put more money on it to put more better transportation. It will, go, it will be good for, for the uh, people who are working with us which is fine. And what they did is great. But on the other side, if you are not on this area, if you are not working with Google, who can help you? This is a question. Who can help you? Un instant. Okay. So uh, I, I, I hope uh, you understand exactly what I am saying is uh, social impact is wonderful. But be careful because one day or another, we may have an issue because we don't control the social impact of the company. Because companies are private and because they are private, we can help something against some other priority. Okay? So, I hope uh, you hear me. Yes, we can hear you. So just about me, uh, I am working uh, to be uh, completely clear. Today, uh, I introduced myself uh, later, but if you want to know more, I am working for over 25 years now for the go-to market of some IT company like Microsoft, Google, Salesforce, uh, Amazon. And um, it's very important on the go-to market to have one big part of um, uh, how people will work together better. And the way to work together better, the best way to work together is to create this, uh, what we call fiction. But when I say fiction, it's not in a negative way. It's a, a, a kind of core enterprise, a core ID that all people can be unified and stick to this ID. And it's super important uh, to work on this. OK, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Frederick, uh, for your wonderful deliberation. Uh, may I request our uh, panelist, uh, Professor Das Gupta, if he wants to interact with Mr. Frederick or with Mr. Sanjay Chatterjee? Yes, I, I have actually, uh, that, uh, both uh, lectures were wonderful and gave, I think, a lot of, you know, insights. And, but uh, I have a, a, I think, very common question, perhaps. That is, um, uh, say, every uh, or, uh, entrepreneurship or organization, business organization, uh, whether it had any, uh, you know, uh, uh, philanthropic or developmental, uh, I think, objective for, uh, I think, society, but it, if you will have effect on society because people will be using it and also 
the entire I think uh, these organizations, they business organizations especially, they create new ones also. And new ones actually change the society. So uh, because the, the in, you know, they did actually become the prime mover of innovations and inventions, and as a result, they go on creating new things, and that actually triggers new ones for the society, and also to changes the lifestyle of the whole society. So that's one thing. But there, uh, it's not that uh, all the time it may be good. Okay, but uh, what I uh, could assess from the you know these presentations. That it was meant that especially something doing something good for the uh, society by the organization. But in that case, uh, say uh, what we, I see that except for the developed countries, uh, in India, I think uh, most of such, I think, you know, uh, these uh, efforts were uh, very rare, uh, rather less compared comparatively in uh, developing countries uh, or uh, I think poor countries like India. Okay, so in uh, coming to Indian context, what would be your suggestion that uh, to see, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, see these ideas get developed more and more and more and more people participate in, uh, as in, um, for the benefit of the society, okay, by doing entrepreneurship. So that is my uh, simple question. And uh, another question, which also triggers me that I think uh, may be very clear to um, uh, Mr. Sanjay Chatterjee, but may not be that much clear to Frederick Torza because uh, he is from, uh, I think, another country. See, in, within India, we have got a lot of diversity, a lot of state, each and every state is different. And uh, as a result, especially as far as the entrepreneurship is concerned, in West Bengal, where we are situated, uh, there actually it is, uh, it has been a long run, you know, uh, question that with how exactly the local people will develop themselves as entrepreneurs. We are not yet so much successful. So in from that light also, uh, what do you think your opinion is? What, what, what way our youngsters should go from this state? Uh, Sanjay, you want to answer? Or? Yeah, the first one you can. Uh, so I, I would like to... Uh, Personally, I would like to answer about the, the last question because I really love this question, to be honest, is because uh, uh, based in India, for example, and it's, it's not my country, so I, I notice it. Or obviously, I didn't forget that I am not Indian. But uh, uh, what I'm saying is how to develop in a, in a country with so much diversity. And uh, uh, I, I would like to say that uh, based on my opinion and my experience, I will say that... Uh, we can develop everything you want until we found a profit. So I am, I am a bit. Uh, uh, Sometimes I'm not. I'm a bit less humanist than many people, but I think that we always link the profit and uh, the development. And when you say that we need to make more diversity, it uh, as Sanjoy say, company with diversity grow much better than the other. So diversity is working. Ethical uh, things is working. And it's working to make more profit. Because uh, you like or you don't like, but we are in a capitalist uh, society. And in a capitalist society, at the end, we need to, to focus on the bottom line. And because we need to focus on the bottom line is a, is a key, is a gasoline of all action you want to do. If you don't make money, then uh, your company will, uh, will turn badly very quickly. So it means that if you want to do any action, any ethical action, you need to, to get money. So always is to try to find some business model where diversity makes sense. And if you want to help someone, you have to uh, sit around the table and to say, how come we can make these uh, things uh, profitable. And if you come and saying that finally, your only purpose is to help people, why not? But it will not work, based on my opinion and experience. Everything works as long as there is profit. Okay. Yeah, just to compliment Fred to what you said is, of course, uh, I mean, when this diversity, we even at these days, like, you know, we should not uh, confine it within the country. 
So if you just extend that, and there are examples, you know, even our own Bengali lady, young lady called Onkriti, uh, her name was, uh, I think, Onkiti Bose. She was ex, uh, from ex Sequoia capital. So she went for a holiday in Thailand and Malaysia and this Southeast Asia. And then while she was making some kind of, you know, some shopping, and then she saw some small uh, entrepreneurs, like those are MSME, uh, you know, artisans and all. So they are making, you know, all those governments and all small handloom products. And as she started and she saw that and she started her business called Jilingo. In two years, this became unicorn. So this case, case is there. You can just Google Jilingo is now a big name. So that's now a... Uh, five of Singapore now this is though headquartered in Singapore that's like uh, for a different reason but at least you know so the boundaries are no more there it's reducing whatever boundaries are there and in the social entrepreneurship sector honestly speaking if uh, India has got a bigger playground be it in health be it in agriculture and, and if you see last one year the highest investment in India in, came in agriculture agri-tech so all these are having a social impact huge and healthcare, education, those are, I mean, other sectors already, you know, the lot of uh, work has already been done. So this gap is reducing, uh, Mr. Dasgupta, as, as you rightly said, but yes, I think we are going to a positive direction. But with a caution, of course, at Frederick, and you also pointed, so of course, with a caution. Also keep in mind that uh, in, um, you know, all the country who liberalize uh, the economy, make a, a free economy uh, works fine because it's uh, on the uh, on the help of the it help the the country and all the interest but as uh, adam say in the beginnings it's uh, interesting to see the interest the personal interest but uh, very quickly in a modern modern society we have to find more than that more than the only the economic things. But at the end, uh, the engine and the gasoline is coming from money. We need to focus on how to make money. How to make money in a, a, in a diverse world, how to make money in a diverse people, with diverse people, and it works. It clearly works. If you have people, if you have a company with male and female, it works better than company with only men. And it works really best. And also, if you take people from different countries, uh, different uh, skills, it works better. So why now we are promoting diversity is because it works. If uh, with diversity it not works, in this case, nobody will try to promote it. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Devesh is there. You yes. would like to interact? Yeah. Thank you, uh, Fred, and thank you, Mr. Shundra Chatterjee, for your nice presentation. And uh, especially, you know, that in sustainable uh, computing or sustainable system, we means uh, socially, economic, as well as the, uh, the system, environmental sustainability. But you, uh, Fred, has mentioned about Ethics is one of the big pillars of sustainability, right? So, sure. uh, but if you see the normal sustainable computing model, ethics is uh, in, inbuilt within the social model, right? Yes. So, my question is that uh, how this ethics you mentioned that the uh, you know the developed country means ethical means it should be ethical, right? Yes. That means they, yeah. But uh, how to improve it? How to means how the government uh, policy? You now, how it can be uh, you know. It can be uh, inserted properly within the social model because you know that there is a mindset of the people and uh, maybe the geographical location and the surroundings you know which uh, makes the people ethical and not non-ethical so how it is actually your suggestion okay there is a, a three different way to proceed when you want to give an ID to uh, your uh, employees. The first thing is to make them understand that it's better for the company and at the end for themselves. This is the first way. The second way is uh, to say, okay, I understand you don't, you don't understand what I'm saying, but in this case, you need to believe me. And the third step is, okay, 
you don't understand and you don't want to believe me. Or so in this case, you just have to execute. The thing is, uh, when you have a, a nation of people who are just executing, it doesn't work very much. If you have people who believe in you, it works a little bit better. And if you have people who are understanding, it works even better. So the thing is, is uh, education, education, education. And the company needs to be a place of education. And it's super important. It's super important that you try to, to train the people and to say that you are training the people because it's helping. So when you are talking about ethics, for example, it's not something uh, just a word because it's nice, it looks like modern, and I have just to say that we have just ethics. Ethics is ethics in action. Ethics in action, so it's uh, you have clearly one person, for example, in your company dedicated to ethics. Ethics manager, whatever manager, but one person who you can is, is here to, to work on ethics. And based on that, they have a plan and they have a purpose. They say where we are today, where we would like to be in one year, in two years. So you, you, you clearly see the ethics in action and all the different steps and what you are delivering every day, month, year. And in this case, for all the people, it's something concrete. It's not a theory. Yes, Sanjoy? Yeah, I, I totally agree to you. So you also had given an example that uh, the olive tree you are holding from a farmer, but yes. uh, there's some uh, legal things that uh, geographical boundary and all the things are there. How you maintain it? What is the share profit things? And what are the, how you manage this uh, business uh, model? About legal, so it's depending. And if you want, we can develop for each uh, region and uh, what could be, when you say legal, you are talking about customs or something like that as well? Uh, you know, so for example, you cannot uh, take the seeds from one country to other country. But you said, uh, Sanjay mentioned about the uh, olive tree, right? So yes, yes, olive, yes. Olive oil. So yeah, olive oil is there. Yeah. The olive oil is being transported. Those are legal. It's absolutely legal. The thing yeah. is, uh, so it's a good, it's a good example. It's a good example. Why? It's because uh, now we, when we try to do, um, you know, give away, uh, to uh, give, uh, the, you know, there is some small things you give during uh, events. And uh, why do we have to give, for example, a USB stick with a presentation, which is great? or you can give uh, any things, why not to give a tree, olive tree adoption? Why? It's because in this case, you strongly believe that as a client, I receive something sustainable, which is one point. Second point, uh, it's not bad, it's good. Okay, why not? There is a good test and uh, it looks like natural and it's natural, so it's great. So it's the second point. Third point, more important, you have some appointment uh, by, uh, because you are not receiving only one time, you receive multiple times during the year, uh, your olive oil. And it's another way to be in touch with your client. So it means that it works better. So here, it's not, okay, we are doing that for the planet. We are doing that because it's sustainable, because we would like to, uh, to avoid plastic. Everything, I'm fine with that. But at the end, we have multiple points of contact with your client during the year. And for sure, you, you can make sure that your client will be much more loyal if every four months is receiving a gift from you. That's if it's giving a, a gift one time a year. Thank you. But anyway, to better respond to your question, if there is a way where we have some limitation because of the seeds, of limitation because of anything, we find another way. But in the same purpose, there is a problem with the seeds? Okay, but uh, crowd farming is doing also cheese. Okay, you can adopt a, a chip. You adopt a chip, and in this case, you will get the, the cheese from the chip. 
okay, it's not possible to export uh, uh, milk stuff. Fine, uh, we will find flowers. Oh, it's not possible to, uh, to do that. Fine, we are going to adopt uh, uh, even, um, even some anything you can, or even a machine you can adopt. You can, the, the thing is how to make sure that uh, the customer and the producer work together. So it's super important to make all the, the people working together. In this case, is increasing the loyalty of the customer because it's like part of the family. Yes. In fact, uh, considering the West Bengal being the number one in the production of the vegetables and fruits in India, so that's maybe one of the very interesting business. Like we can, uh, you, know, if, you know, this can be instead of a fruit, you can sell, you know, maybe juice or it may be, you know, pulp or it may be a jam, jellies and all those things. And for flowers, you know, honeys and all. So there are a lot of options and all. So yeah, so this is just a, I mean, kind of, you know, by example, and those can be, uh, those barriers can be overcome with different alternatives. And if there is no alternative possible, it means that uh, we are not talking for uh, much of things because we are living in North Korea. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the interesting discussion. We have received uh, one or two questions from the participants. Let's take those questions. And uh, somebody has asked how to spread business all over India. Probably Mr. Shanjay, you would be able to, I mean, answer yeah. it. Sure. So that depends upon what exactly you are going to sell. I mean, if it is IT or whether even in IT, whether it is services or products or consulting. So for every field, whatever is your business is. So based on that, uh, you know, you have to make up marketing and sales plan for the whole rest of the India. And also you have to, you know, the best way to do it based on your solution offering, I would recommend there's a concept called IP and, you know, business landscape, uh, rather marketing land, landscape analysis. So even if you cannot do it as an entrepreneur, being less experienced, there are small you know uh, companies, startups. They help you do do so. There are professionals. So that gives you a landscape uh, for the India, like you know your product or service, where this has got a demand in which part, which age group, which demographic, and you know which time of the year. So all those things and already if there are existing competitors, so the competitor analysis and also so and based on that you can plan your marketing strategy and a sales plan accordingly. So it doesn't, uh, one solution doesn't fit for all for this case. So definitely, and even if you are, your business is government is a uh, customer, then your strategy for the government will be entirely different from, maybe, maybe, you know, quite different from the B2B or B2C. So considering, in gist, considering whether your business is type like B2C, B2B, 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 B2C, or B2G, whatever. So that will depend based on your marketing landscape, based on your, whether it is product service or consulting, as I said. So a lot of factors that you have to consider and accordingly the marketing and sales plan has to be done. It is not difficult uh, for your, you know, uh, type of, you know, whatever, uh, once we know the, the product or services that you are trying to sell. Yeah, Frederick, you want to add? Yes, in compliment, I just would like to give you an advice. Don't be too smart. It's super important to be not too smart. The reason why is uh, based on the uh, non-success of France, for example, I can say that uh, in France, we are uh, trained and educated to make uh, something really great, wonderful, uh, absolutely perfect. And when you did that, first of all, you take a lot of time. And second, you have only a few parts of the population who can work on it because it's too smart. But um, if you take the example, for example, in the United States, they are think globally instead to think by experts. So by thinking globally, they are going to say, OK, I have a product to sell. How can we be sure that any kind of people on this uh, big continent or in this big country can work on it? 
So it's, it seems to have, we need to, they need to develop simple solution, simple product where everyone on earth can use and not only the genius. So it's also another uh, mindset to develop is because uh, in our schools, people ask us, the teacher ask us to be the best, the best of the best, the best of the best. Then after we, we try to, we are very proud to build something complex and difficult. And finally, we need to make something simple, simple where even dummy people can use. If you, if what your, your ideal client is not a genius, you have to, to think of that. And when you think of that, you think globally. But if you believe that because of your training, and I know that in India, in France, in this kind of country, we try to push the countries to, we try to push to be expert and we are extremely proud to make something complex. But finally, it's the total opposite we have to develop. To impact, you know, if you make your products or services or anything very complex, means the user number of users gets reduced, and the commercial value gets reduced. You know, so ease of use and more people can use is, you know, the way you can run your commercial activity to for sustainability and do development for future products and services. Uh, I have a, so, I have a question uh, regarding this uh, this uh, ethics point of view. You're talking about. I think uh, Mr. Sanjay has given a slide that uh, tobacco, tobacco, cigarette, right? Cigarette, yes. you know, all these kind of products are not good for health, but still, people are companies are selling and uh, huge amount of sales is there. So, is it uh, you know we know that this uh, is also written that injurious for health, but how you know this companies even uh, our government is also promoting. Or this, allowing the business to grow, so it is not ethical. Is it not? Uh, is it good for ethics? Yeah, good well, question. Good for you know. I mean, sometimes like you know, you, we cannot do a zero and one. Like you know, something. I mean, you know, a lot of people are dependent on their living is dependent on those industries. So now, if you see the way the ITC in India, so there are companies they are now diversifying in different you know business areas, so that at least uh, the you know they can have uh, they can reduce that part of the business which is having causing you know harm to the society to some extent so that's uh, we can't really help and that's not a problem you can in, in, immediately solve and some of the countries like you know i don't know whether smoking ban you can ban the smoking throughout the country if something like this is possible then at the same time for for those kind of companies those are existing for last maybe 50 years 80 years then some some plan has to be done accordingly so yeah Probably um, that doesn't have a single solution for this problem to solve. And uh, you know, the business is very high. You know that very high business in this kind of. No, but if you see, if you see, if you see the percentage, the growth in that area is reducing because their total business is high. Yeah. So if you talk about some companies now, they have diversified in other areas. Now they are putting more stress in that area, so they are growing. The tobacco business is reducing. But tobacco business is reducing. That particular part of the you know the whole business is reducing. But you know, it's a it's a question of the fiction you want to attach to the to the brand. What kind of fiction you attach to the brand? So before in 1950s, uh, for example, about the example of the tobacco, uh, you can say that uh, maybe you know this uh, this uh, this brand Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike uh, was the brand who say to who say that finally uh, with Lucky Strike you can liberate you can make free women because before uh, we they, they try to develop the tobacco to women and lucky strike did it by uh, saying that with uh, with lucky strike you women can be free and it was a symbol of freedom and so it means that the marketing can help to create fiction and uh, this is a, the th this is the things. So I understand that maybe in the in the meeting uh, in the executive meeting at uh, the tobacco company they say okay 
we have the graph saying that people, uh, it's not really good to, to smoke. What can we do? So at the beginning, what they say, they are going to, to pay lobbyists to say that it's not true. We have other ideas saying that uh, tobacco is not uh, so bad. Then after, it's not working very well. So in this case, they say, we really need to think to, to, to diverse the company. Okay, so in this case, they are creating, Marlboro is creating a, a brand of shirts. Uh, we have different uh, things and they try to develop. When we say about Philippe Maurice, they are trying to develop some uh, uh, e-cigarettes e -cigarettes and uh, also to push in the, into this business. Also, they have a fund because what is important is not only the money you are getting on the day-to-day -day by selling your product, but is by using the money you got till now to use this fund to invest in other companies. So yes, there is diversity. There is diversity and uh, all the power of the fiction, of the marketing is to create the appropriate fiction. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. That's Considering cool. the paucity of time, then I will take the last question before the delivering of vote of thanks. The question comes, of course, related to ethics. It is the person Pankos Dolui is asking what is values. If we can, I mean, you know, have a quick response, uh, either by Sanjay or Mr. Frey, uh, please. Okay. So basically, to me, values basically are the individual that they believe that motivates people to act uh, the way or others in a good way. So more of intrinsic in nature, right? Yeah, it's, it's like a it's like your guide to become a human. I mean, guide to human behavior. So that's what I consider as values. So mainly your principles and you know uh, philosophies and your reasons for. You know, you you being like in 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 uh, there's a Latin word called cogito argo sum, so it means uh, we exist, therefore we are. So that's the that's the value. And in in uh, in 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 Boy Scouts of Bengal or other you know uh, Scouts actually not Bengal normal Scouts there was a uh, there was a definition for value of anybody any human being. Be it an employee, or be it an entrepreneur, be it a businessman, and whoever. So that that I think still value, you know, have a kind of concurrent in this area, Asia as well. So that used to we used to call it a small phrase: trusty, loyal, helpful, obedient, smiling, pure in body and mind. Or obedient, smiling, thefty, pure in body and mind. So trusty, loyal, helpful, brotherly, courteous, kind, obedient, smiling, thefty, pure in body and mind. So I forgot initially. So this is the, I mean, we call it the mantra of Boy Scouts. So that's, that in one word would be what the value stands for a human being. That's personally what I, I do think. And in complement, I will say to make it simple, value is what the consumer buy. It's a value, it's not a price, it's a value. When I'm going to uh, take a Coca-Cola, I'm not taking uh, something I can pay. I taking behind that all the value of Coca-Cola. So it's super important that the value are uh, aligned with your ethics, with everything, and with your uh, with your brand message. Because at the end is what the customer buy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, today, uh, our uh, director of Incubation Center, Mr. J.P. Saw, who has joined this program from South Africa. Uh, I would request Mr. Shaw to kindly deliver the vote of thanks. The, Mr. Shaw had been uh, for a quite uh, significant number of years have been uh, have spent in France. So today, as Mr. Frederick is from France, so I thought that it would be most appropriate if Mr. The JP Shaw delivers the vote of thanks. Mr. Shaw, Prem, can you give him the panelist uh, yes, link sir. to join? Yes, Mr. Shaw has joined. Mr. Shaw, kindly. Sir, please unmute your mic, sir.
morning to all of you. Uh, it's still morning here. It's around, uh, uh, you know, it's about uh, 9.30 here in uh, Johannesburg. So, and of course, good afternoon for all of you in the in India. Uh, it's really a great pleasure. Say, vraiment a grand plaisir. Nous avons Monsieur Frédéric avec nous de la part de notre université et de mes collègues. Je profite de vous remercier profondément. Vous avez donné votre temps précieux pour partager cette webinar avec nous. Et aussi, qu'est-ce que je dis? Vous avez partagé votre knowledge et également votre expérience avec tous les participants aujourd'hui. Et j'espère qu'en futur aussi, on va profiter. Et nous avons de plaisir de votre collaboration avec nous en futur aussi. Je ne sais pas, Monsieur Frédéric, vous êtes aujourd'hui, vous êtes maintenant en France ou un autre pays Non, je suis en France pour l'instant. Quelle ville Vous êtes à Paris À Paris, à Paris. Oh, moi, euh, moi j'ai travaillé avec euh, Office de tourisme indien à Paris euh, entre 92 et 97. Pour cinq ans, j'étais là-bas avec l'ambassade de l'Inde. Et moi, je suis rétré maintenant, en euh, 2018, et je suis avec cette université euh, de la charge de, de, de tourisme et également de, de directeur de incubation, charge d'incubation à notre université. Et M. Mukhopadha, mon collègue, il m'a dit aujourd'hui euh, que M. Frédéric est là aujourd'hui avec notre vina, si c'était possible. Moi, je dis que c'est vraiment un grand plaisir. Et j'espère, je, vous avez vraiment parlé de, de choses très, très importantes euh, quand euh, pour notre pays. Euh, c'est vraiment... Très important, la pilar, la colonne, vous avez dit, l'éthique oui. et aussi l'éthique en, en action. C'est très important, euh, des values aussi. J'espère euh, euh, tous les participations que vous avez écoutées, vous, euh, euh, il va profiter et puis il va utiliser ça aussi comme, comme un entrepreneur. Et parce que c'est très, très important aujourd'hui pour un pays qui, qui commençait à développer, mais on ne peut pas comparer avec les pays européens maintenant. Même, bah, on, on, c'est vraiment euh, 75 ans qui ont été libérés avec euh, euh, cette année, à 15 août. Nous avons célébré notre euh, 75 euh, indépendance. Mais quand même, c'est un euh, 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 passage loin. Euh, mais doucement, on avance, mais j'espère. Uh, ça, ça va venir. C'est un grand pays. Il y a plusieurs problèmes, oui. uh, comme Monsieur uh, Devasis uh, de notre collègue, il, a, il, il vous expliquait. Et également mon, mon collègue Monsieur Das Gupta, il a dit c'est c'est un pays avec uh, beaucoup de dévotisme. De, uh, comment je dis C'est maintenant nous avons presque 30 uh, États en Inde et tous les États il y a des de problèmes sont sont différents. Mais ça va, ça peut aller, mais je, je vous remercie à court, M. Frédéric. Euh, là, maintenant, euh, je suis venu ici, je suis en vacances, euh, ici à Afrique du Sud, à Johannesburg. Mon grand-fils, il travaille, et je vous, votre euh, détail, vous aussi euh, pratique la, la compagnie Cisco. Mon fils, il travaille pour la, cette compagnie ici à Johannesburg, Cisco. Il est ingénieur à euh, la profession, mon, mon fils, Rajan. Il travaille pour le. J'étais là-bas à, à son bureau quelques jours avant. Il est un ingénieur avec le, cette, cette organisation, Cisco. Et je vous, euh, votre détail, comme, euh, comme quoi vous aussi travaillez pour oui, Cisco oui. et les, plusieurs autres compagnies. Merci à court. Et je remercie aussi mon collègue, etc. Et, et, euh, et puis, de toute façon, notre vice-chancellor. Euh, professeur Moitro, il n'est pas là, mais lui, il est le, le, une personne euh, qui travaille vraiment beaucoup avec, avec nous et puis il utilise tous les professeurs et nous organise les webinaires, etc. 
donc euh, j'espère euh, moi une fois je suis je, euh, je vais retourner à Calcutta et s'il y a un webinaire en futur on va vous appeler on va vous plaisir de votre collaboration encore merci monsieur Frédéric Bien. merci beaucoup merci thank you very much uh, most of it i have not understood <laughs> i think my co panelists no, i i thank uh, uh, i thank uh, uh, thank uh, uh, mr frederick on behalf of our university and also all of us for his uh, for sharing his uh, experience and his knowledge with our participants and i also stressed on the need that uh, the three pillars that he mentioned in his uh, deliberation the three pillars of human management ethic and ethics in action i think that is the need uh, i feel i mean from my side i feel that is very very important for us today in our country it is important for all the countries if they have to really develop i am here in south africa this is also i, I won't say that they are also like you know but they are very close to the european country uh, this particular country also is very pretty advanced of course much advanced than us the the way things are i, I know i had worked here also long time back but now after retirement my son is here working for this company cisco i was telling mr frederick frederick in his uh, resume i was saying that he is also providing his consultancy to this company cisco my son also works for this company cisco i went to that office a few days back uh, near the mall of africa so you know, uh, things are things 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 are different and we would like to utilize the same type of things for our place also and hopefully if things become like that it won't be very far off of course thank you this is what i was saying and, and really a, a big pleasure to be seeing my colleagues today and uh, very good uh, very good webinar today that's i thank thank all of you for for uh, organizing you. such thank a you. Thing, such a great uh, effort thank you thank you mr shaw thank you very much uh, i only wants to say two words merci beaucoup to mr <laughs> frederick thank you and to mr sanjay mr sanjay thank you very much any amount of thanks will fall short of our gratitude so uh, with the because of the paucity of time with the permission of our honorable vice chancellor sir and my co panelists i bring this and thank you the it team for giving the wonderful support as usual so with this i am joining this session to a closer once again with big thanks to all of you thank you very thank much you. thank you thank you thank bye you bye bye thank you sovran sir sovran sir you want to finish sir something let's see yes thank no you. no it's fine it's fine no problem thank you sir thank, thank you very much